Good morning. I wanted to talk about figs. For many years, I bought figs in the grocery store and thought of them as a Mediterranean food. I thought about them as something that there was no way I could possibly ever grow in my backyard. And then one day I heard about a plant called the Chicago Hardy Fig, and I thought I'd like to give it a try. And it took me a while to get around to it. And it was only two summers ago that I finally planted my first Chicago Hardy Fig. And I'm so glad that I did. Last year, the Chicago Hardy Fig that I planted, which I have at this point split into multiple plants, but the main one, the original one, it produced figs for me just about, uh, a, I would say probably a month's worth of figs. And I was able to harvest them. Hang on, I gotta grab the cat. <sighs> I was able to harvest them. This is Macy. I was able to harvest them uh, sometimes as much as a bowl uh, of figs and sometimes it was just one or two um, every every few days and that made my my summer a whole lot more fun uh, when they finally started uh, producing which was actually closer to the fall I'll put the date right there for you uh, but uh, I was uh, I was surprised by how many figs I got off of this tree. So I wanted to tell you more about the Chicago Hardy Fig. I don't know that much about other fig trees, but uh, the Chicago Hardy Fig is very special for people in my region. I am in the Northeast United States in Zone 6B in Rhode Island, but you can actually grow the Chicago Hardy Fig as far north as a Zone <laughs> Hardy is Zone B. You can tell she's kind of a needy cat. Um, anyway, uh, the figs themselves are purple. Uh, figs come in green and purple varieties and, you know, shades in between. The Chicago Hardy Fig is a purple fig. It is sweet. It's not as sweet as some figs, but if you let it ripen, it is, it is quite sweet. It's, uh, if you've only ever had dried figs or fig newtons, it doesn't taste anything like that. A, a fresh fig is a very unusual fruit and absolutely delicious. I don't know how to describe it except to say that if you haven't tasted them, you should buy some in the store and try them, and the ones that you grow at home will probably be better than that. But I had eaten them from the store, and, and I can say that I'm really glad that, uh, that I'm now growing them at home. They're also very expensive, so if you're looking for bang for your buck, uh, planting a fig tree or several is a really good, a really good deal. Now, one thing about the Chicago Hardy Fig that's really handy, there are a lot of things about the Chicago Hardy Fig. <laughs> see if I can say that again. There are a lot, there are a lot of things about the Chicago Hardy Fig that are really handy. One is that it is self-fertile, so you do not need another fig tree. I have split this into a couple of figs, but that doesn't, uh, it's, it's pollinating itself, essentially. They're all clones, and it does just fine. It doesn't, it doesn't really need a, another fig to cross-pollinate. In fact, at every node uh, along the branch where you have a leaf coming out, you would get a fig. Uh, so it's 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 a very prolific uh, producer. Um, so that's one of the cool things, the the fact that it's self pollinating. Another cool thing is the Chicago Hardy Fig will put out a a spring potentially a spring harvest and a fall harvest. You're pretty much good with a fall harvest so long as your season is long enough for that. The spring harvest is a bonus and you can really only get the spring harvest if you are either in a slightly warmer climate than I am or if you <laughs> or if you decide uh, that you're going to wrap your tree up and keep it very warm for the winter. One way that people do that in my region is by actually burying the tree. They will 
dig up the roots as much as they can. They will wrap the tree in burlap and then, I don't know, maybe they, maybe even plastic, I'm not sure. And, and then dig a trench, lay the tree down, bury it under leaves and, you know, that sort of thing. And then, and then when spring comes along, they dig it back up, stand it back up and let it start again. And that way they get a spring harvest from their fig tree. I don't have the energy for that. I'm happy with my fall harvest, but, but it is possible with the Chicago, Chicago hardy fig. Third cool thing about the Chicago hardy fig is that it is root hardy, which means that even if you get a really cold, severely cold winter and it kills a tree back to the ground, the roots will send up new shoots which will grow into branches and the thing can the thing can grow like six feet in a year. I don't know what I don't know exactly how tall it can get in a year, but I know that mine has grown about six feet in a year. And then still put out fruit on those branches, which is unusual for a fig tree. Most fig trees, if they die back to the ground, will just die. Um, or if they grow back, they won't grow back fast enough to start producing fruit, fruit by the same fall. So another cool thing. Propagating figs. This is, uh, I think, more universally true of figs, not just the Chicago hardy fig. You can propagate a fig in several different ways. Many people know that you can clip off about six inches the end of the one of, uh, of the branches in the springtime. Some people use uh, rooting hormones, some people don't. Just put it in sand or uh, like a vermiculite or very light soil. And, and then people will often put sort of a, a, a soda bottle terrarium over top of these things to keep them from drying out too much. I've done this once when I first got my fig tree, there was an extra branch coming off the side that I didn't really want in that spot. And so I clipped that off and I successfully grew that into a second fig tree using this method. There are several other ways of propagating a fig tree. I, I found that that first method useful, but I've tried it other times and it hasn't been as successful as it was my first time. So, and this is what I understand from other people is that you, uh, it's kind of mixed results. So uh, it's still, if you, once your tree is, is growing, you'll have plenty of branches to clip to try this with. And so it's certainly a useful method. And I would look at more detailed directions on this than just listening to me go on about it here because I'm not giving you really great directions, but but it's not that hard to do. It just doesn't always succeed. So you can plant fig seeds. I haven't done this. I've read that it's unpredictable, uh, but given how quickly a fig will grow, it might just be worth trying if you have a couple of different fig trees and, and you think that they might be cross-pollinating. I don't know anything about this, but theoretically, of course, you could plant them from a, a seed. A third way of propagating your figs is by something called a, a process called air layering. And that is when you basically take peat moss, slightly damp peat moss, and you wrap it around uh, one of the branches, usually like a half an inch to three quarter inch thick branch, where you've removed some of the, uh, the bark from the outside of it. You wrap the peat moss around that, and then you wrap that up and keep it tight and you keep it uh, in you know, some sort of plastic wrap. And then you just leave it for several months. 
I've heard this works well. I don't know exactly how to do it, so I can't give you specifics about exactly how it's done. I think I will probably try that this spring because it seems like it would be fun. I don't have a lot of need for new fig trees at this point. I've got three or four going now, and actually maybe five. <laughs> I've got more than I need. So uh, I might make some for friends though, and that would be a good way of doing it. And using that method, from what I understand, your chances are higher that you will have success. Uh, I used a fourth method last year and it worked great. So I just wanted to tell you about that. The fig tree that I have had some low hanging branches very close to the ground. And I think this is common with fig trees. They'll put out branches all along their, their height. So I had a couple that came out fairly close to the ground and they were so close that I thought about clipping them off. And I thought, well, wait, what if I were to put a tray, a plastic tray underneath them and, and then sink the branch as it was coming out, sink the branch in some soil and cover that with something, weigh it down so the branch would stay in the soil and just let it stay there. And that's actually a process that's, a, it's called ground lay, layering. And so I used ground layering to, uh, to produce several new fig trees that uh, by the end of the season, I had lots of roots that had sprung out of the branch. And I didn't do anything like remove any of the, uh, the bark or anything like that. And it might've worked more quickly uh, if I had, but it worked great as it was because I had a, like a root clump about this big by the time the fall came around. And so I just sank that whole thing into the ground in a new location for one of them. And another one I put in a different spot. It's, it's going to be really exciting to see how they do this coming season, but each of them had a very strong root system already. So, so that kind of sums up the different ways that you can propagate fig trees, but you've got a lot of options and in fairly good options for making lots of fig trees out of just one. So if you have any questions or observations about figs, and also if you know any other varieties that will thrive in zone six, I've been looking for other varieties and I've seen listings for like Turkish varieties that might work, but I, I imagine that there are other, other types that would work pretty well in my zone, especially if I'm satisfied with just having a fall harvest, but I really want to know more about them. So please, if you have information about that, share it in the comments below. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to, trying to get a few more subscribers here, spread the good word about uh, gardening in your backyard, and, and also about creating a food forest as opposed to just a garden. Uh, in your backyard. And that's that's kind of what I'm all about. I'm all about perennial foods and I mix in things like tomatoes and annuals, but I really, really like foods that come back year after year. And that's fruit trees and perennial vegetables and herbs and things like that. I'm one of those, you know, I, I'm one of those set it and forget it kind of guys. Although I have to say it always takes a little extra work uh, a little more work than I anticipate, but uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I uh, love to interact. If you also want to get in touch with me, you can uh, find me at the Food Forest Garden Club, which is foodforestgardenclub.org. And you can also find me on Instagram at Food Forest Garden Club. Looking forward to meeting you. Thanks.